I might just skip through everything except for the games, okay? We live on the continent of Elios. Four realms surrounding a holy land at its center. Wow. A thousand years ago, our lands endured a vicious war with the fell dragon. Oh my god. We called upon heroes from other worlds to aid us. Heroes known as emblems. With them, I bet the this warriors is fire of emblem. our nations fought as one. In the end, we were victorious in defeating and imprisoning the fell dragon. Damn, knocked him right in the fucking head. In the years since, our world has been safe. But now, I sense a resurrection. The binding weakens. Uh-oh. It's Void Dracula. The style looks cool, I like it. Where's the gameplay? Where's I want to see the gameplay. Yeah, where's the gameplay, man? Like, let's go. There he is. Yes, it is him. Oh man. You're awake. Huh? You're really awake, yeah? A thousand years? That's how long I've been asleep. That's a while. What are those horrible things? If I may. You are a divine dragon. A oh, it's turn based. The family of dragons revered as deities. The war. The fell dragon. I feel like I can almost remember. Um. I've had my eye on you. I'm not a big turn based guy. Ring. Marth, right. Sigurd, leave it to me. It is rather quiet, I know, but it will liven up as we gain allies. It's crazy how, like, they have this, like, it looks like kind of like a really interesting open world game, and then, like, the combat is turn-based. <laughs> the time has come! Now, as one, emblem, engage! Two-minute GCD, I like it, yeah. I think it's also like just a preference thing. One strike will decide it all. Please grant me your strength. Was that her stand? What the fuck? She asked me to gather all of the rings and bring peace back to Elios. Okay. That's cool. Sure. I'm probably not going to play a turn-based game realistically. It's just probably not going to happen. Hello, everyone. I'm Yoshiaki Koizumi, and I'll be your guide for today's Nintendo Direct. I'm going to skip ahead and just go to the different trailers. What you just saw was the latest installment of the Fire Emblem series, Fire Emblem Engage. Okay, let's see here. In addition... Uh, they're selling some de, uh, some special pack. Okay, all right, here we go. Mango. It takes two. Next. Cody and May's relationship is on the rocks. All right. But it gets even tougher when they're turned into dolls. I to get their bodies back. They'll brave an onslaught of challenges where working together is the only way forward. It takes. I heard this game was pretty good, this actually. It's a critically acclaimed two player platforming adventure. Yeah. Even the bumpiest road can be traveled with someone by your side. Wow. Venture through fantastic worlds. Super good. Yeah, worlds, I've heard good things about challenging it. Challenging experiences around every corner. In addition to single system play, the game can also be played on two systems via local wireless or online with a pal. Via That's the cool. Free I like that. Pass. Wow. Help Cody and May return to normal. With a partner, of course. Okay. Yeah, that's it nice. It Takes Two launches on the Nintendo Switch system November 4th. Pre-orders begin today. Much playing this McConnell? Shop. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't seem too bad at all. All right, I'm the about that. The story begins. What's this? 
Oh, I, I love this. I think this is really cool, how they're using, like, the old type of, like, movie, like, stylizing, and they're, like, kind of splicing it in with video game shit. I think that's badass. <laughs> After mysteriously vanishing as a child, Ruka Minasuki visits an abandoned hospital in search of her lost memories. Okay. Oh, this is when we announced Soda Poppin'. Use the camera obscura to repel evil spirits and uncover the memories that were sealed away. A dark curse looms near. This what looks like a game for emo girls. Fatal frame. Yeah, Mask this is 100% an emo girl game. For the first time in the West on Nintendo Switch next yeah, year. Yeah, 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 true. There's a new hero who looks mechanical? Introducing Wave 2 of the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 expansion pass for the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 game. This is Eno, a new hero. She appears to be, uh, mechanical? complete her quest to have her join your party expanding your options for classes and battle strategies i never played this before this is i think a turn-based game Challenge battles will also be added test your metal in consecutive battles against tough enemies wow defeat all enemy waves to earn rewards challenge even stronger enemies to earn valuable accessories and special outfits More hero and gameplay additions will arrive in Wave 3. Wave Incredible. 2 of the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Expansion Pass launches on Nintendo Switch October 13th. Wow. All right, next. Get drawn into these Nintendo Switch games. Nautical nonsense begins when SpongeBob and Patrick make a wish that unravels the very fabric of the universe. In this 3D platforming adventure, you'll travel through portals to seven outlandish wish worlds like prehistoric kelp forest and wild west jellyfish fields. Explore using all sorts of wacky moves, don over 30 fantastic cosmic costumes, and meet your favorite Bikini Bottom residents from the TV series, voiced by their original actors. That's it. Soak up SpongeBob. I feel like like this game reminds me a lot of remember those sega genesis games that were just like so totally fucking like ridiculous and out there things like earthworm gym it gives me vibes like that so hard Bob square pants the cosmic shake launching Toe on nintendo Earl, switch yeah. next year what's this you're already dead fit box with familiar what? characters from fist of the north star oh they'll be your instructors in exercise mode leading what you the through fuck? various boxing drills defeat as many enemies as you can with just your fists in battle mode or take on rivals in boss battles that's including cool. jaggy fitness boxing fist of the north star launches on nintendo switch march 2023 this ain't your uncle's no, that's dodgeball. Cool. Throw whatever you can at opponents in this hilariously hard-hitting party game. Embrace the absurdity of frantic minigames, each one featuring ridiculous rules in madcap arenas. Customize your character from head to toe with hundreds of accessories. Plus, challenge up to six friends and frenemies in local and online play. They won't even know what hit them. Oh. I think games like this, these are kind of like the uh, Fall Guys style games or like Gang Beast style games i think they're actually really good i i like them because like they're good because you know like every fucking christian mother is okay with it because there's no guns or satan or anything like that uh yeah it's good for kids and i think the games are uh, you know fall guys is fun to play oddballers launches on nintendo switch early next year a small fox washes okay. ashore on a ruined island. I think I've seen this. the unknown in this isometric action adventure game. Okay. Your only clue here is the manual. Traverse the island's I can't interconnected speak Japanese, realms so this is to be a retrieve problem. its missing pages. Dangerous traps and even more dangerous monsters lurk around every corner. What this is interesting. What secrets will the island reveal? Tunic launches on the Nintendo Switch system September 27th. Pre-orders begin today on Nintendo eShop. 
I feel like a game like that is like it's it's only really appealing in the context of like the boss fights and the combat being good. It, it's like if yeah, if the combat and like the boss fights are good in a game like that, then the game's good. Isometric Elden Ring. It remind yeah, it was like kind of like a mix between uh I don't know, like Legend of Zelda and Hades. New Intel has arrived for these Front Mission remakes. Full remakes of two Front Mission games are storming in. In Front Mission 1 Remake, you'll pilot giant machines called Bonzers in tactical turn-based combat. As you progress, you'll obtain skills that can help you gain the upper hand against opponents. Uh... You can also test your metal at the Coliseum. Continue the battle in the sequel, previously unreleased outside of Japan. Take advantage of additional features like more terrain effects, weapon and armor attributes, and over 80 new skills added from the first game. Front Mission 1 Remake launches on Nintendo Switch this November. Front Mission 2 Remake will launch on Nintendo Switch next year. And in the future, a remake of Front Mission 3 will also launch on Nintendo Switch. It's a wonderful... It's not... I mean, like, it's a, another remake, man. Like, guys... Wow, that's exciting. I'm so excited. I can't wait to be able to play the same game I already played before. Yeah, I want to see some, uh, some action games, man. How about a new Pikmin game or something? Life for a new generation. New After Metroid nearly Prime. 20 years, a beloved farming experience is reborn. Welcome back to Forgotten Valley. Here, you'll manage a farm passed down to you by your father. Wow. Restore and expand your farm as you nurture crops, care for your friendly animals, and help the land flourish. Befriend the townsfolk while you're out and about in the valley. This is not really... So whenever a game like this is made, they don't think about people like me and ask themselves, how can we get these guys in as the target audience? Like, I'm not the target audience for this game. All right, I'm going to just be real. You might even meet your future partner and start a family. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, in this, this is not... Those around you will grow older as time goes on. Their appearances will change over the years. This is depressing. Your child will also choose their career based on how you raise them. What the fuck? An especially wonderful farm life in Forgotten Valley lies ahead. That's weird. Story of Seasons, a wonderful life launches on Nintendo Switch. Well, if I ever want to have an existential crisis, I guess I'll play this. What's this? What the fuck? What? The first post-launch Splatfest for Splatoon 3 has been confirmed. Here's the theme. What would you bring to a deserted island? Gear? Grub or fun? Am I missing something? So I never played this game. Incredible possibilities. Which team will you join? It's just fun. Is it fun? Yeah, I, I haven't played this before. And more free updates are planned for Splatoon 3. Be on the lookout for more in The music reminds me of Fall Guys. What the fuck? Bow in the future. It's a Zoomer game? I guess. I don't know. So, Squids, what did you think? Uh, what would you bring to a deserted island? As for me, I've already decided. Okay. I hope you'll all participate as well. I would bring a cell phone with GPS Next. so I could get Please off the take island. A look at this. Okay, here we go.
Okay. Okay. Octopath, wait, what? Introducing a brand new game in the Octopath Traveler series. Eight new travelers embark on a journey through the land of Celestia. With that, we could realize a world without conflict, ah. without bloodshed. I'm going to become a star and bring smiles to people's faces. Wow. Just like Mama. I'm hitting the road. I'll be back once I eliminate that devil called Pop. It's such a good game. Is, is this a good game? Take everything from me. Shall die by my hand. Not again. Not the Damn. stench. The stench of blood. <laughs> Doubt is what I do. Leave the hunting to me. You'll have this turn based though. Oh, you want. I need to rediscover who I am. Explore a wide world set in a bustling era. Each traveler's path action differs between day and night. Yeah. Okay, the Lord knows well the ways of the world. What will happen when their paths intertwine? What's that big round? Let's go, Tenders. And what adventures await them in this new world? I think I found the source. The eight travelers each have their own story to tell. Where will their journeys lead them? And you. Path Traveler 2 launches Art's on great. Nintendo yeah, Switch, I just February 24. As I said, like turn-based games, I just I can't do it, man. What you just saw I just was can't Octopath do it. Traveler 2 from Square Enix. I mean, it looks interesting. I feel like if you like those kinds of Please games, look forward to the journeys of that's like a, that's heroes. like a W game for you. That's a huge game. Let's if you see like those games. More headlines. A magical home okay, is let's waiting see for you. Welcome to your new fairy tale life in Fay Farm. Cultivate your homestead and forge everlasting friendships in this farm simulation RPG. Discover magical spells to grow crops. Face off against mischievous foes and explore the enchanted realms of Azoria. Along the way, you'll befriend a lively cast of characters who call this island their home. Tend and grow your fairy tale farmstead solo or together with up to four players in local or online multiplayer. That is cool. By gathering resources and crafting items, that you'll be cool. able to customize your home and enjoy this mesmerizing adventure even more. As the seasons change, new spellbinding surprises can be unlocked that'll help you restore Azoria to its natural splendor. Magic awaits in Fay Farm, launching exclusively on Nintendo Switch, spring 2023. It's a musical blast from the past. Uh, can we get to like the swords and demons and shit? What is this? Like, uh, what, what's going on with the, the, the let's get to some uh, fucking, like, guns. What's going on? Celebrate the 35th anniversary of the Final Fantasy series with the latest theater rhythm game. Uh-huh. Enjoy iconic songs like One Winged Angel. It's the Sephiroth one. Torn from the Heavens. Suteki Dane and more. There are 385 songs total. Songs are categorized by game. So you okay. can play each stage while experiencing the series through the music. In addition, two players locally can complete stages in pair style, while up to four players can battle to the beat in online multi-battle. I feel like almost all of these games are either just like capitalizing on nostalgia, re-releasing something that's already been out before, or badly implementing an old idea. Like how, like we've seen like two or three Animal Crossing clones. This is just like Final Fantasy DDR. Like I I don't know. I I'm not uh they're for kids, man. I mean Yeah. I, I mean I, I I I don't know. I mean all I'm saying is like 
I don't know. Maybe people, maybe kids love them. I, I, I mean, it's just, it doesn't seem like it's super crazy exciting to me. I don't know. Theater Rhythm it's Final okay Bar Line begins audience, at Symphony yeah. on the Nintendo Switch system February 16th, 2023. Pre-orders begin today on Nintendo eShop. Wow. After the game's launch, pay DLC songs from the Saga series. Who could have expected Near that? Series. Octopath Traveler. Live Alive and more will be released. That's 90 additional songs. Plus, additions containing a season pass and 27 extra songs, including Melodies of Life, will be available. Okay. Next, what's this one? A cosmic adventure is just around the corner. We got Bowser here. What's Bowser doing? Blast off on an adventure of galactic proportions with Mario and the rabbits. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's dive into exploration. Freely roam through all sorts of wondrous worlds, each one jam packed with discoveries. Okay, this is cool. Find coins. Great. Unlock hidden paths. And help out the locals with their troubles. This seems okay. At shops, you can get items that'll come in handy during battles. After each quest or battle, your team will earn rewards oh and get stronger. Sparks are here to lend a helping hand. Recruit up to 30 different sparks, each with their own special powers. And Why is everything turn-based now? I don't understand. What is this? How does this happen? Skills. They can help spark a wow. decisive victory. Can Mario and the Rabbits put an end to the darkness? What the Mario fuck? Plus Rabbits Sparks of Hope launches on Nintendo Switch October 20th. Pre-orders are available now on Nintendo eShop. A gold edition can also be pre-ordered, containing the base game, weapon skins, and a season pass. Restore peace between humans and monsters. Okay, what's this? Rune Factory 3 returns on Nintendo Switch. Oh, it's not turn-based, okay. From okay. Quests to chat with the locals, cultivate crops, and care for monsters. What is it about every fucking game you've got to do farming? Every fucking game? How many farming games do we have now? This reminds me of like, remember whenever we watched that one Games Expo or thing like that? I forgot even what it was. And uh, it was about some kind of fucking space game. Every game, space game, space game, space game. And now we've got farm game, farm game, farm game. Why can't we just have like Dark Souls like game with like demons and monsters and then another one that's like a knockoff of the first one and like half of them are actually kind of good and I can just play those. Why can't we just have that? Among yeah, come on. Relaxing activities. You're you farming Dark Souls, yeah. Into a monster? Your abilities in battle and conversations with the locals will vary depending on your form. Your choices will also cause different events to occur. Plus, a brand new mode has been added to help you enjoy more quality time with your in-game spouse. Rune Factory 3 Special launches on Nintendo Switch next year. All right. Wow. Plus, a new Rune Factory series will launch in the future. Is that right? More Nintendo 64 games are on the way. Great. Pilot Wings 64. I never played this one. Mario Party. I went hard on that one, dude. Mario Party 2. This was the first Ma one I played. I remember, dude, this is Mario Party 3. I remember I got home, my mom, she bought me Mario Party 3. Cause like, so I, I played it at my cousin's house, Mario Party 2, and I thought it was like the best game ever. I came home, I'm like, mom, you have to buy me this game, it's not an option. So she bought me Mario Party 2. Mario Party 3 comes out, and she took me up to like Target or Walmart or someplace, 
and she bought me Mario Party 3 pretty much like the week it came out and I remember like Cameron and, and like Amber and Ashlyn like his sisters like they all came over and, and like usually we'd have to go to bed at like you know fucking like 10 p.m. because we were like eight and nine years old but like our parents just said fuck it they got a new video game we're gonna let them play Mario Party until midnight and I remember playing Mario Party 3 a fucking late as shit and I was like nine years old man and it was like yeah usually they'd have to come home or something like that and there was never an issue Mario Party dude 3. we loved Mario we bought every single one I remember so like we had to make a rule this isn't Cody that came over yesterday. This is like another Cody. Cody, every time that he would lose a star or somebody would get a star, he would stand right next to the Nintendo 64 and he would hit the reset button every fucking time. And so finally we had to make a rule that he had to stand like 10 feet away from the Nintendo 64 so we could stop him before he actually got to it to turn it off. Yeah, what a little shit. Yeah, I know. On Stadium. Pokemon Stadium 2. I only had the first one. 1080 Snowboarding. This was a huge popular game. I never played this though. Excite Bike 64. I didn't do this one either. These games will gradually be added in the future. You can play a selection of Nintendo 64 yeah, I had Mario games Party and enjoy and many more gaming benefits Pokemon with an Stadium. active Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack membership. Oh, and there's one more game we should mention. What's that? James Bond? What the fuck is this? It's gold? Of course, Goldeneye. Oh, of course. I actually never Why played that. Mix things up with these Nintendo I Switch never games. played Goldeneye. Live your best life on the newly discovered continent of Antoesia in this immersive RPG. Yeah, I know. I Perform never did it. Perform over 100 types of daily tasks to build character and deepen your relationships with the locals. In doing so, you'll gain access to different job classes and abilities. A grand adventure into the unknown awaits. The first Various game that we played was uh, Counter-Strike. We did Counter-Strike and then I think Halo or something like a that. A malfunction causes you to crash land on a strange planet. Build a new rocket from scratch in this management sim game. Management Scout simulator. Scout with the planet for materials. Then build machines to refine them into various resources. Oh. Eventually, you'll construct multiple production lines like these. But the planet's creatures will attack, so keep them at bay. Factorio launches on Nintendo Switch October 28th. I feel like this game is really popular, and I would probably play it, but I don't know if I... Like, it's like... This is like a mic. This is a game for people that have retired from StarCraft. It's like, all right, I'm not going to play StarCraft anymore. We're just going to play Factorio now. A young girl named Ib visits an art museum with her parents in this 2D exploration adventure. Uh huh. She wanders through a busy gallery by the artist Guertena until one particular piece draws her in. Looks like shit. Will she be able to safely return to her own world? Every decision affects her fate in Ib. Launching on Nintendo Switch Spring 2023. Mario Strikers Battle League, where eight players locally on one system can get gritty, is getting a second free update. Joining the roster are Pauline, a physical powerhouse with fast movements and strong tackles. Wow. And Diddy Kong, a midfield speedster with dazzling techniques and high pass accuracy. Cool. Plus, more gear and another stadium are being added. The second free update launches this month. I could see this being relatively interesting to play. The final summer begins. What the hell? Okay. 
When strange islands suddenly appear, Risa and friends set sail to investigate in order to protect their homeland from impending danger. Looks nice. Sprawling landscapes Looks set very the nice. stage for your adventure. Freely explore this vast world okay. and forge your own path in this charming RPG. This is appealing. heroes from all walks of life will join your party. During battle, work with your allies to activate various skills, which can be swapped out when needed. Teamwork is paramount after all. New features are also in store. The keys to this lively adventure are in your hands. Awesome boob physics. Atelier yeah. Ryza 3, Alchemist of the End and the Secret Key launches on the Nintendo Switch system February 24th. I feel like that's the new marketing strategy that every game has. Have an anime booba girl in your game. That's the whole strategy. There's no fine print, there's no subtext, there's nothing besides that. And if you have two of them, that's even better. And it just keeps going on from there. Yeah, it's some good strategy. I swear to God, that's what they all do now. But it's bad if it works, oh, it works great. Wave three is on the way. Here's a sneak peek at two courses racing into Wave 3. Mary Mountain from Mario Kart Tour. Peach Gardens from Mario Kart DS. Maybe this is going to be a really unpopular opinion, but I never played Mario Kart back in the day because I thought F-Zero was just infinitely fucking better. I thought F-Zero was infinitely fucking cooler, way more badass. I played F-Zero non-stop. I'm gonna be real. I thought it was way cooler. Wave 3 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass DLC from the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe game ah! launches this holiday. They're both racing games. Active Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack members can enjoy this DLC at no additional cost. What the was F-Zero? can also be purchased on its own. F-Zero was like you got these different, like that's where Captain Falcon came from. Uh, it's like you would have like these different ships that you would like, they weren't really like ships, they were like basically like imagine what Elon Musk is going to make in 10 years. Like think of like the kind of, uh, the kind of car that that looks like. Well, like, imagine there's, like, 70 different models of those, and that's the F-Zero uh, ca characters, and uh, the different cars you would drive, like, hover cars, yeah, a a and, like, you would go through different maps, and fucking, you know, like, there'd be different ways you could sabotage other people, and it was, like, a racing game. Hover cars racing on a roller coaster, yeah, basically. I even had the first one for Super Nintendo. How was that? Next, we have some news to share about Nintendo Switch Sports. In the next free update, golf will be added. I went hard on golf. Oh, there it is. Go in the water. Boom. Oh, never mind. Of course, you can play these locally. Additionally, up yeah, to I eight like, players I, I like online Nintendo can play golf. at the same time on the same course in survival golf. Survival? Those with the most strokes will be out. We so like if you lose you die. The update would release this fall. That's good. However, it makes it we'd makes like it a bit exciting. more time for development. So the update is now planned for this holiday. Please wait just a little longer. You know what they should do? They should have like battle royale golf where like the um the fucking like around the end hole there's like a giant red ring. And it's coming in, and it's like a fucking molten inferno. And if you get touched by it, or like your ball goes out there, your character goes out trying to get the ball, and it just incinerates you into a skeleton. On screen, and you die. That would make Mario Golf Next, fun. we have a special guest. Yeah. Mr. Miyamoto. Hello, it's been a while. Hey. I'm Shigeru Miyamoto. Oh, wow. I have a few things I'd like to share with you today, including some news. 
First, as you may have heard, oh my God. the Super Mario Brothers animated movie we're developing with Chris Melodandri from Illumination will release next spring. Great. And Super Nintendo World, which is entering its second year at Universal Studios Japan, will also open in Hollywood, California, in the U.S. Recently, That's we've been badass. working on the finishing touches for both. Today, I'd like to That would be something I would legitimately do an IRL stream about. It's so crazy for me to think that, like, the first video game that I ever, like, really went hard on and, like, beat was Super Mario World, and I remember reading this guy's name in the credits. Isn't that nuts? Holy shit, yeah. Dude, like, I, I, remember, I remember it so clearly. A little bit about Pikmin. It's been over 20 years since the first game, and we're still working on the series. <laughs> Stop, I don't need to hear about that. This is Pikmin Bloom. It's a smart device game we started with Niantic late last year, in which players all over the world are planting flowers. That's cool. Here's a quick rundown of the game for those who have yet to play it. Pikmin Bloom is a smart device game that uses your location. By walking outside, you can find Pikmin, raise them, and plant flowers together. It's like Pokemon Go. All you need to do is take it with you on your daily walks or outings. You can look back at the end of the day and see where you walked. Send out Pikmin and collect the items they found that day. And feed them nectar to increase their petals. I think that, like, it's going to be really hard to emulate the, like, flash success that Pokemon Go had because it was the first time that it happened. It, like, number one, it was the first time you had, like, actual AR. And on top of that, you had, like, the, uh, what, what's really the word for it? Like, the, like, spontaneous nature of, like, having different Pokemon in different random places. Yeah, it wasn't the first. It was the first that mattered. Like, most things that were the first weren't really the first, but they were the first time that the concept was done in an approachable way that was, you know, like, appealing to the mass public. So, how many steps did we take today? Mandatory walking. While you're out and about, you can also use the AR feature to take photos with Pikmin. That's cool. Pikmin are all around you. Let's take a quick look at my screen. Okay. I have nearly 700 Pikmin. They love nectar. If you give Pikmin nectar like you see here, their flowers will bloom. Oh, wow. You'll also see the number of steps you've taken that day. Regarding the map, the clouds will clear along the path you walk, so you can keep a record of locations you've visited. That's interesting. I normally move around within Kyoto, but I've also been going to Osaka. Why doesn't the government just do this? Like, everybody's worried about the government tracking them. Why don't they just have Pikmin there? And then that way everybody will be happy about getting tracked by the government. This seems like a pretty simple fucking solution. I never even thought of that. Yeah, I mean, shit. I mean, kill two birds with one stone. You get a mic microtransactions in the game, and you also figure out where they're going. Yeah, it's a mo modern problems call for modern solutions. To Universal Studios Japan. I occasionally go to Tokyo as well. You'll say to yourself, okay, this time I'll try walking here. It makes trips and walks a lot of fun. It's a very easygoing play experience you can enjoy just by taking it with you. That's I interesting. I hope you'll try it out. Okay, now to the main event. Please take a look at this. All right, what is it? Wait, is it actually going to be a new Pikmin game? Yeah, it is. Those are the those are sons of bitches that eat them. I know these motherfuckers. They would eat my Pikmin. Remember that? Holy shit! This is what I said at the beginning. Oh my god, they're making a new one. That's right. Oh, Pikmin 4 what? will launch in 2023. We won't be showing any gameplay today. However, you'll be able to play like this from the Pikmin's perspective near the ground. Bro, I hated them so much. I also much. made a new t-shirt. 
Nintendo Switch has made controlling the game simpler, meaning you can further concentrate on the core essence of Pikmin gameplay. We call it Dandori in Japanese, or strategically planning, deploying, and commanding the Pikmin. I oh. hope you're all looking forward to Pikmin 4. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Koizumi. I used to love Pikmin. Like, I, I was, uh, yeah, I, I was so, so into it. I, Dude, whenever, remember whenever the GameCube came out, Pikmin was one of the games that came with the GameCube? That was the one, like, I told my mom, I was 11 years old, and it was, like, for Christmas or some shit like that, and I got Pikmin uh, for Christmas for my birthday, and I got my, game, uh, my GameCube. It was a good time, man. It was a great time. Thank you very much, Mr. Miyamoto. Zoomers don't know how good Pikmin was. Yeah, more smugglers run GameCube. Dude, Cameron came over and played that every day. Take next your level dancing dance. game to the next level. What's this? Okay. What the hell? What is this? Oh my god. Wow. Dude. They, uh, the only time that I knew of anybody that played Just Dance legitimately was Izzy wanted me to buy it for her so she could do it for a stream. That's the only time I've ever heard of anybody actually playing Just Dance. Girls play the lot? Maybe you're right. What else? Can you survive the season of death? That sounds pretty fucking bad. As you cultivate a peaceful farm life in the village of Lethe, the season of death quietus continuously returns, threatening to destroy all. Oh, that's all. an ability for Travel uh, the world Dark and Nights. find a way to put an end to the it's calamity the AOE in combo this life ability. simulation RPG. Along the way, allies with different motives will join your cause. While facing numerous dangers, you'll begin to uncover the truth of this ill-fated world. After this presentation, a demo containing the opening days of your farm's first season will be available on Nintendo eShop. Save data can be transferred to the full game once purchased. Harvestella launches on Nintendo Switch November 4th. Just what 4th. we needed. Yep, just what we needed, guys. Get ready for a devilishly good time. After 500 years, Umbra Witch Bayonetta was revived in the present day. In the first Bayonetta game, she clashed with angels to recover her lost memories. And uh -huh. in the second, confronted demons to save her best friend. Now, in this third installment, she'll fight to protect the world from the sudden invasion of man-made bioweapons called homunculi. She's gone from fighting for herself, to fighting for others, to fighting for the world. Those who have overcome their past histories with Bayonetta to fight alongside her include the journalist Luca. And another Umbra witch, Jean. New ally, Viola. I've never played one of on these the games action. before. A hair raising. Yeah, I've never played one. Demon summoning. Globe trotting adventure awaits in Bayonetta 3, launching on Nintendo Looks Switch good. October 28th. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, it's like, I always assume Bayonetta was like Devil May Cry, but it's a girl instead of a guy. Like, that's kind yeah, that's kind of what I assumed, but I, I don't know. Never played it. Pre-orders are available now on Nintendo eShop. 
After today's Nintendo Direct, a new trailer delving more into gameplay will launch on our official YouTube channel. Okay. A dark what fantasy is this? mystery abounds from the creators of Danganronpa. Welcome to the city of perpetual rain. Oh, I like Many that. cases good. remain unsolved in this corporate controlled metropolis. Those who investigate are called master detectives who come from all around the world. Ooh. What? Meet Yuma, an amnesiac detective. <laughs> And Shinigami, the spirit haunting him after their pact. Shinigami? Dive into these unsolved cases as a trainee at the detective agency. Black Tower. Thoroughly inspect each crime scene to gather clues and evidence. Oh. When you're ready, Shinigami will conjure a realm tying the crime scene to the truth. A mystery labyrinth. By the way, marketing strategy at work. Just like what I said. Overcome obstacles and manifestations of mysteries to edge closer to the actual events. However, mystery phantoms will attempt to hinder your progress during each case. Avoid their barrage of falsehoods and slash through contradictions. Uncover the secrets of Master Detective Archives Rain Code, launching first on the Nintendo Switch system Is Spring that right? 2023. Enter the village, if you dare. You know, the I never played this game. in the Resident Evil series is coming to Nintendo Switch as a cloud version. Yeah, I never played Ethan this Winters game. Winters must face the horrors I of don't the know. village and its four fearsome I never could get into Resident Evil game. abducted daughter. Resident Evil Village Cloud launches on Nintendo it's Switch good. October 28th. Cloud version? You can I what is Cloud? And try out the free demo today on Nintendo eShop to pre order the full game. It's so good. Is it the really Winter's good? Expansion DLC containing a new third person mode, additional story content, and more will launch December 2nd. Additionally, Three other recent entries in the Resident Evil series will be available as cloud versions on Nintendo Switch this year. Okay. It's an action-packed lineup of Nintendo Switch games. Let's see it. Vanquish foes to avenge your father in this kung fu action brawler. Sifu? By thrusting tripping and parrying opponents you'll break their stance and gain the upper hand it's Sekiro fall in combat and you'll get older and weaker in turn however you'll learn new techniques to complete your mission can you exact revenge before your time runs out Sifu pummels its way onto Nintendo switch November 8th Pre that's kind of interesting on holy Nintendo shit eShop. Sifu's great, yeah. Experience the events leading up to Final Fantasy VII in this exhilarating action RPG. Zack Fair is a young and ambitious soldier operative aspiring to become a hero. Together with Sephiroth and Cloud, he investigates strange disappearances within his elite unit. This remaster features enhanced HD graphics, an updated combat system. Oh, those are the models in Final Fantasy VII. Crisis Core Final Holy Fantasy shit. VII Reunion launches Final on Fantasy Nintendo 14, I mean, Switch December 13th. This is Final Fantasy VII. The classic arcade shoot 'em up Radiant Silver Gun is coming to Nintendo Switch. I'll be honest, like this one actually excites me. Like fuck all that farming show. Like this one, oh, bro, I, I played these a lot. Fire different types of weapons to take down waves of enemies. Dude, I went so Defeat hard on these enemies games. of the same color for a chain bonus, or take down differently colored ones for a secret bonus. Rack up these bonuses for a high score. Radiant Silver Gun launches on Nintendo Switch later today. Recruit a team of shipwrecked heroes and make your way out of a derelict space station in this roguelike game set in the endless universe. Where's the but combat? It's what, what not is as this? easy as it sounds. 
You'll have to fend off continuous open waves up boxes. of monsters as you make your way through procedurally generated levels. Complete various quests to unlock new heroes, weapons, station areas, and more. Up to three players in online co-op can attempt to escape their grim fate. Do you have what it takes? Endless Dungeon launches on Nintendo Switch next year. Wow. Amazing. The journey of world regeneration begins anew. Who the fuck comes up with that as a name? Remaster of Tales of Symphonia is coming to Nintendo Switch. The world of Silveront is controlled by shadowy forces God damn. called Desiance. To stop them, a person known as the Chosen One must ascend the Tower of Salvation. I really hope that's true. Lloyd soon embarks on a journey with Colette. Wait, wasn't that just like the tower fucking like, uh, what was it called? Heaven on high? It looked just like that. The current Chosen One and his childhood friend so yeah, in this beloved the same. action RPG. They'll meet allies along the way, like the wandering aristocrat Zelos. And a lumberjack who lost her emotions after an experiment, Prisea. Other allies will also join the party. The fate of two interconnected worlds hangs in the balance. Tales of Symphonia Remastered begins its journey on Nintendo. There's no, Switch yeah, there's no farming. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Okay. This is like the recap, I guess. I never played Life is Strange. I always kind of wanted to, to see what it was like. It's good, it's good, don't. I love how people are, like, there's like half and half. Everybody's like, this is amazing, and the other half are like, people are like, this is awful. I don't know. Once they run out of ideas for Fall Guys, I sure hope they bring in guns. That would be badass. Like a machine gun or something? Yeah. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is coming to Nintendo Switch. Wait, is this an actual... One day, I never played this original game. crash lands on Planet Popstar. To help Magalore return to his home planet, Kirby and his friends set off on an adventure. In addition to sword, whip, and other familiar copy abilities, the new mecha copy ability makes its debut. Blast foes from a distance, or punch them up close. Dude, I remember whenever uh, there was a game, I think it was like Kirby All-Stars or something like that, on Super Nintendo, and I fucking loved that game. Like, I beat that game like 50 times. Kirby Superstar? Yeah, something like that. It was amazing. It's packed with other powerful moves as well. The game supports local play for up oh, that was one of the players fights. on yeah. the same system. Plus, everyone can play as Kirby while using their favorite copy abilities. I thought about going and like playing through a lot of my old favorite Super Nintendo games and like games growing up. Like I, I thought about doing that for like a week or so or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. It's also a collection of sub games to play. This includes the new sub game Magalore's Tome Trackers and returning ones like Samurai. Bro, f this was in that game. The fuck this game. Kirby. All sub games can be played with up to four players. Yeah, I remember that. An adventure of deluxe proportions awaits. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe launches on the Nintendo Switch system February 24th, 2023. Pre orders begin today on Nintendo eShop. Wow, Retro Gaming Week? As yeah. part of Kirby's 30th anniversary, a remake of Kirby's Return to Dreamland will be released. One thing I would really love to do 
is like uh, I, I've never actually beaten Secret of Mana. And if I could get like S Fand and maybe McConnell or one other third to actually go through and beat Secret of Mana, I would be so happy. That would be so badass. We I never I never played Chrono Trigger. Forward to this game. Thank you for Good watching man, today's that's fun. Nintendo Direct. I want to play the original. This next trailer will be our last announcement. Okay, here Please we go. Take a look. Let's see it. Is this what I think it is? I think it might be. Don't tell me all we're going to get is this Mayan calendar. No. Oh, shit. Holy fucking... Wow. Oh, my God. You're on a spaceship. Breath of the Wild 2. Tear oh, they're just it's a new name. Holy shit. New Kenshin character, yay. That's badass. May 12th. Next year. That's actually pretty soon. I think it looks badass. I mean, I haven't played a Zelda game like super seriously. The last Zelda game that I really actually seriously played was like probably Wind Waker. There are so many of these games that I just haven't even played. I'm so far behind because, like, the thing is, like, I'm the kind of person and I just go super hard on, like, one or two games and I don't really switch it around or mix it up a bit. I just kind of watch this. I just kind of play the same stuff all the time. I know everybody says that uh, Breath of the Wild is, like, best game ever. Twilight Princess, I remember I was going to play it, but then I ended up not playing it for whatever reason. Ocarina of Time was a huge impact on your child. Yeah, no, it was. I still have the strategy guide for Ocarina of Time. I still remember whenever I beat it, too. I remember I stayed up late. It was like fourth or fifth grade. My mom let me stay up late, and, and we beat Ganon. I was so fucking happy. It was badass, man. Holy shit. Uh, play? Play at TP. Twilight Princess is one of the best? Yeah, I mean, I guess I might have to. I mean, look... A lot of these games probably, I mean, like, I, I'm gonna be real, like, I'm not the target audience for these games, okay? Like, fucking uh, raising your family and, like, having your, you, you know, like, getting old and, and farming, like, this is, a uh, bro, like, this not, uh-uh, nope, not for me. Uh, like, but, you know, we talk about the Pikmin game, there's, like, a couple of other games in here that looked pretty decent, and, like, you know, maybe I would try those out. I think that there's a relatively high chance for me to play the new Zelda game, or the new Pikmin game. Breath of the Wild is the Dark Souls of Zelda games. That, that's my understanding of it, yeah. Uh, I understand that, like, Breath of the Wild was, like, like, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I, I don't really know, but, like, Breath of the Wild was, like, the same jump in like scope and quality that Link to the Past to Ocarina of Time was, right? Like, is, is that an accurate way to describe it? Yes, yes, okay, all right, I thought, yeah, I mean, everybody has been extremely positive about it. Yeah, for Zelda's, yes, Link to the Past is the best. It, Link to the Past is probably my favorite, uh, but like growing up, that's, uh, th that's basically what I was, uh, what I grew up on. Elden Ring, Genshin Impact, and so many others borrowed elements from Breath of the Wild. Well, like, people have to remember, like, Nintendo is the GOAT. And so it doesn't matter how many L farming simulators they bring out, because they still are the fucking GOAT. And they're still gonna make the new Pikmin game that's gonna be fucking awesome. They're still gonna make the new Legend of Zelda game that's gonna be fucking awesome. And it's... 
I, I mean, I think that's amazing. I, I really do. It's so crazy to think that, like, all the time people talk about a lot of games that are, uh, you know, like gaming companies that have, like, fallen off, etc. I feel like Nintendo, for over 30 years, hasn't fallen off. Like, whenever you really think about it, especially with their consoles, like, every Nintendo console, besides maybe the Wii U, was really, really innovative. Like, you, you look at the, uh, yeah, besides the Wii U. The Wii U was just like the Wii. Well, the Wii U was portable. It was great, right? But, like, a lot of it wasn't marketed properly, etc. But, like, the Super Nintendo was fucking massive. And then Nintendo 64, first 64-bit system, right? It was fucking huge because nobody else was even doing uh, a fucking 32-bit at the time. It was massive. And uh, I think I was like one other one was like Turbo Graphics or something like that was 32-bit, but I don't remember. And, and then GameCube obviously changed the size and like the discs, and then Wii was like obviously like the biggest one. And, and like Nintendo Switch now, that's like just totally fucking portable. Uh, I don't know. I I I absolutely respect Nintendo.